This is the third in a 30-part series giving an ecological overview of the insect orders. This video covers mayflies, or the order Ephemeroptera, which is the one of the orders found within Paleoptera, meaning ancient winged. This is the oldest group of insects that possess wings and contains the mayflies, dragonflies, and damselflies. Their wings are primitive in this regard because they are unable to fold over their body. This group is also the only one that has wings in its second to last molt. Every other type of insect that is winged is only winged in its adult form due to the engineering trade-offs that powered flight imposes. Mayflies or Ephemeroptera are the one exception to this rule and is because of their penultimate molt or subimago stage. The order name of the mayflies is Ephemeroptera, which was coined by the Danish zoologist Johann Christian Fabricius in 1793. The name comes from the Greek ephemeros meaning short-lived or lasting a day and terra meaning wing. Morphologically, these insects actually possess similar traits to bristletails. They typically have two to three tails used for detecting vibrations and predators. These two are called the cerci, and if they possess a middle one, it's called the terminal or caudal filament. Their name is apt, as these insects, when they molt and finally get their wings, come out to mate and only last about a day, or often even less time. This is in part what allows them to have wings in their penultimate stage. These insects are remarkably soft as adults. This lack of hardening of the wings synergizes with the short time of use. I would compare their wings to buying a cheap knockoff product. It does the same job and costs less money or energy to produce, but it is not built to last and serves as a short term solution. This inherent disposability works very well for these insects. After spending a year or so underwater, they all come out of the water in one coordinated effort, reproduce, lay their young, and then perish en masse. This helps to elucidate why every other insect group does not grow wings in any stage but the adult. Wings need to work for longevity if they are to be used. Only in an ancient group whose flight is more primitive does such a strategy work. In the same way that dragonflies' primitive wings have allowed them to dominate and have a monopoly on the aerial predator niche, mayflies' primitive wings have allowed them to capitalize and have a monopoly on the strength by numbers niche, specifically in aquatic ecosystems. Freshwater ecosystems are more conducive to predators than herbivores, whereas terrestrial forested ecosystems are the opposite. This is because in forests, despite there being more nutrients overall, they are locked up in massive trees and only slowly re-enter the ecosystem when plants shed their leaves or die. In freshwater ecosystems, nutrients are often more immediately available because water constantly redistributes organic matter. This strength in numbers strategy essentially makes mayflies aquatic cicadas. But the key difference is in their timing. Cicadas drain nutrients from the roots of trees, but their level form does this typically over a longer period of time than mayfly larvae. Mayfly larvae consume plant matter at the bottom of rivers and other freshwater bodies. Mayflies have adapted the strength in numbers niche to aquatic environments, and cicadas have done so to the terrestrial forests, which is why the length of their larval stages are different to account for this nutrient radiation. An important thing to understand about mayflies is that when you're seeing them out of the water, their features may appear and sound mechanically and morphologically extreme or impractical, such as a second pair of eyes for detecting females above in giant swarms. But these things make a lot more sense in the context of the extreme lengths mayflies go to in order to mate. There is an inherent risk to avoiding predators through just population size. Namely, 
you need to limit how much nutrition you need in order to maximize the number of individuals ready to mate. As a general rule, complexity and competition motivate and influence each other to create creatures that become more and more advanced. However, there is a limit to how advanced an organism can get within a certain market cap, so to speak, before it reaches evolutionary stasis. What I mean by this is that there are only so many nutrients in an ecosystem, and so mayflies must limit and refine their ergonomics to be extremely economically efficient. This is the driving factor that designs their 24-hour swarms. The mayfly is designed to be frail, defenseless, and disposable, or ephemeral. It is designed this way because evolution has dictated that this is the optimal design for the niche. The reason these insects even need wings before they enter adulthood is because, within the last 24 hours of their lives, they need to leave the water. The surface of the water is extremely dangerous for insects, as it is a well-known way to score an easy meal. By having wings early, as opposed to dragonflies or other aquatic insects that need to crawl onto land before they begin their final molt, mayflies are able to immediately leave the water in search of a safe place to become adults. In other words, mayflies need their wings early precisely because they don't plan to be around very long. Other insects have a bit more time to kill before they mate, and so wait to be fully prepared. The mayfly can't afford to waste time, and thus has adapted to mitigate any and all risk. Cicadas are similar in this regard, although perhaps a bit less defenseless due to the higher aforementioned market cap of nutrients in forests. Forests are generally superior than rivers when it comes to nutrients meaning cicadas can accumulate more resources during their long developmental period underground. This allows them to emerge in much greater numbers and with tougher exoskeletons compared to mayflies, which have a much shorter aquatic larval stage and a more fragile adult form. Cicadas are currently more successful than mayflies due to having a higher budget, so to speak. But mayflies beat them in sheer length of time they've been on Earth that is, evolutionary history. In line with their strength and number strategy, both cicadas and mayflies have a high fecundity, laying hundreds to thousands of eggs at a time. And when they are born, mayfly aquatic larvae also often disperse passively via drift, where they float downstream to colonize new habitats. Mayfly larvae, or nymphs, are crucial components of freshwater ecosystems. Functionally, they serve as primary consumers, feeding on detritus, paraphyton, and algae, and thereby facilitate aquatic nutrient cycling. Additionally, they are a key prey source for fish, amphibians, and predatory invertebrates, making them a foundational part of aquatic food webs. Mayflies serve as crucial indicators of water quality, as their presence is strongly correlated with low pollution levels, as they feed on the detritus found in rivers, ponds, and lakes. They are widely used in biomonitoring programs where their absence can indicate key environmental stressors. Anglers also prize mayfly larvae as bait species, often making fish hooks that resemble them. Sometimes mayfly swarms can be intimidating to people and even overwhelming, and indeed they are. These are beautiful and massive congregations, which are a profound example of insect innovation and a symbol for the ephemeral and mechanistically poignant biology of insects. Truly a wonderful order. Thank you for watching this latest episode. Be sure to stay tuned for more order analyses like these, along with a myriad other forms of bug content. Thanks.